Elaine Chow will witness history when she attends the inauguration. She's also likely to make history as the first Asian American to serve in two U.S. administrations. She's nominated for Secretary of Transportation after serving eight years as Labor Secretary under George W. Bush. Her parents immigrated to the U.S. from China, and she calls that the catalyst for her own journey. My colleague Mike Walter sat down with her and her father, James Chow, and asked them the importance of their Chinese roots. Well, my parents have been great philanthropists, and they're people of, of great humility, as is reflective of their Asian upbringing. So when my mother was alive, my parents always gave anonymously because they are people of faith, of humility, humility, and they believe that whatever they received, it was because of the glory of God, and they didn't deserve the credit. It was God's glory. When my mother passed away on August 2, 2007, my father, in his grief, wanted the world to know what a wonderful person my mother uh, is, and began to make his philanthropic giving public. And he uh, named a lot of projects in her name to memorialize her life and to have her life be an inspiration to others. So we have given actually, actually not me, he, <laughs> my father has given quite generously to many projects in the United States and also around the world. And the goal, as you mentioned, is to provide a bridge uh, of understanding between peoples from different backgrounds all around the world. Talk to me about that bridge. Well, and uh, uh, it's no question that the mutual understanding is the foundation of the friendship. Foundation of the friendship is a cooperation. Cooperation is promoting a better world in the future. So this actually is start from my parents, start my grandparents. They, they believed education can change a person. Education can build your good future. So we started this. I feel benefited so much. So because of this, so we, are, we do emphasizing, and we did emphasizing how to help people. Are there things that can be borrowed as you move into your job? Because uh, you even talked about it, failing infrastructure. I mean, we've ridden, I'm sure you've ridden on the rails here on the East Coast, not so great. Are there things that can be borrowed from China here? Well, I think most of all, we need to develop a lot of talent and also technology here. We already have. Uh, you know, Silicon Valley leads the world in terms of creativity and innovation. And it is spreading its knowledge and know-how throughout the world. And it's a hallmark of who we are as Americans. Uh, but you're right, there are also other technologies and other ways of doing things. And so we should always be open uh, to uh, new ideas and uh, different ways of doing things better. I was at an uh, event last week in New York, Henry Kissinger was speaking, uh, and then of course uh, he was talking about the, the relationship between China and the United States, and I know you don't want to go there, but President, right, <laughs> President Xi also talking about globalization. One of the concerns I heard last week when I was at this event in New York is that this concern that uh, the United States is going to take this step back. Um, we, we saw this with Brexit in the UK. Do you think that's overblown, or do you think that th that's, that's something people should be concerned about? I don't think America can forsake its leadership around the world. We are the most economically strong, uh, politically well-respected uh, nation in the world. Whether we want to or not, we are looked upon by many, many other nations around the world for leadership. And so I think it's hard for America to step back. And it's hard for America to not fulfill uh, that leadership role. But how that leadership role is exercised, that takes discretion and wisdom. And we will see.